Today, it's replacing a thermostat on a refrigerator. The uh, compressor just doesn't turn on. And the way you can tell that everything gets warm, is if you strike the area that has the thermostat, you'll see that the compressor kicks on. There's a thousand other things I'd rather be doing today, so let's just see if we can get through this as quickly as we can. The first thing we're going to have to do is uh, get rid of everything that's on the, the top uh, shelf here. I, I learned this from Steve Ash, PartSelect.com. He just retired. Thanks for the video, Steve. Let's take this whole thing out. Let's actually unplug the thing. Jeez, uh, I hate this. Remove these knobs. I guess I'd better actually remove this light bulb. You're going to be taking out these quarter inch screws. Don't take the ones out right here. That's locking down a circuit board, but you do want to remove these screws right here in order to get access to the thermostat assembly. Be able to pull it up and then unscrew the thermostat from the structure that holds the thermostat. In this design, there is this metal rod that looks like it's used to actuate the, the baffle that controls the difference between the freezer uh, temperature and the refrigerator temperature. And I can't remove that. There's probably a good way to remove that, but actually, I don't think I'm going to need to do that because I can just lift this and pull. Yeah, I can lift that enough to get to those quarter inch screws, unscrew those, and then take this, which is the tube that's used to, for the thermostat itself. And I just need to unravel that tube from around there. Pull this out and then put on the new thermostat. There we go, I was able to remove those quarter inch screws. And now I'll just go ahead and, this is the thermostat. All I need to do is unravel the end of the thermostat, pull it out. I should be able to take this out. There we go. And then unloop this. And then I'm going to have to pull it out through here because as you can see, it's locked in there and I don't have the tools or the skill set to figure out how to get rid of that uh, rod. Here, once again, I'm going to thank Steve because he was the one that suggested using these needle note pliers to, uh, to disconnect this. At this point, you're probably saying, let's just go watch Steve's video. Probably a good idea. Then again, Steve's working in a completely sterile environment unlike anything you would encounter in the field. Okay, this looks good. Now, having uncurled the tube that goes with the thermostat, now I am pulling it out. And this is looking real good. I'm gonna need to take this off, put it on here. So I will get this as close as I can to a straight line. And then put that plastic tubing on it. Being careful not to crimp it or bend it. There we go. It's about three quarters of an inch. Let's see where this is. And be very careful when you cut this off not to cut into the metal tube. Okay, now I'm ready to thread this back through the same way I took it out. Yeah, I went underneath the um, that metal rod. Yeah, now it's just a matter of uh, reconnecting the wires and putting it back the way I found it. And then re-threading this tube the way it was originally. I was stuck for about 30 minutes in the middle of this job because the old thermostat had orange wire was on the bottom, the red wire was on the top. The new thermostat had those two terminals side by side instead of top and bottom. I did some Google searches. I finally found from our old friends at appliancepartspros.com uh, a nice thread of questions and answers where almost all of them were, hey, where do I put, you know, where do I put the, the orange wire? Where do I put the red wire? Well, the answer is, doesn't matter. They describe this as a closed circuit. It doesn't matter which one you connect. It'll work either way. Okay, so I've gotten everything put back the way I found it. I didn't take this whole thing down. I couldn't figure out how to do it. Uh, but I just threaded the tube through, wrapped it around, and now let's go ahead and give it a try. I don't think I damaged anything. Let's see what happens. Oh, isn't that nice? 
that's the sound of a compressor turning on. And if you recall before, I had to I had to strike this thing in order to get that to happen last time. Let's see if it holds up. I almost didn't publish this video because I did everything wrong. I found a video from a company called repairclinic.com that was exactly the same model and I realized if I had the right screwdriver with me I could have disassembled that whole top assembly and had it a lot easier to get at. You know, it's a little 90 degree screwdriver. It's probably at one of the kids' houses. I know I owned it at one point in my life, but I couldn't find it and so I just improvised. And so I was thinking, no, why am I going to put this video out? It's just stupid. I did everything wrong. But then it worked. Everything worked out. So even though I did most of the things wrong and it was way harder than it needed to be, it ended up working and I'm very happy about that. So that's the moral of the story. Good luck with your repair.